Well, hello, political vigilantes. My name is Graham Elwood. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the show. A lot of great ways to support the show. Don't click skip ad. Let the ads play all the way through. That's a good thing. Clicking through is good. Going to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, you can support the show and submit stuff like this, like Dominic Miro did. Dominic, very much appreciate that uh, you submitted an article um, that the article, you know what it's doing, it is helping make Gotham great again. And it is an article from Danny uh, Surgeon and said the forever wars are gone without me. Now we've covered some of his stuff before. He's been a writer while he was an active uh, in the military on truth, he's done a lot of articles for Truth Dig. He's now out of the military, and so is kind of saying goodbye to the military and why. And it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty poignant thing. He's a guy who was in West. He joined West Point in July of 2001. Of course, two months later, 9/11 happens, and then he got deployed numerous times. And now he's 35 years old. He was 18. And he's like done with it. And he was, got deployed numerous times to Afghanistan and Iraq. And he saw the, the war machine, what it was really about. He went from a young patriot to um, now he's an anti-war progressive activist, I guess is what you would call him. And it's pretty impressive, you know, because it's one thing for us civilians to say, oh, war's bad, war's bad. It's another thing for a combat vet to come out and say this ain't right. It's like why... I've interviewed people from Veterans for Peace, and we've had them come out to um, progressive comedy tour shows. But this this is a, a, a pretty, it's a pretty lengthy and detailed article. I'm going to read some of the highlights. The link to the full article is in the show notes. Um, but this is one of the quotes that he has at the top. Patriotism in the trenches was too remote a sentiment and at once rejected as fit only for civilians or prisoners. From Goodbye to All That from 1929. This is World War I. Um, and I met, you know, going, I've, I've done seven comedy tours to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. And I remember, you know, I went um, 04, 06, and 07 to Afghanistan, and then 07, 08, and 2011. And I remember like the 7, 8, and 2011, and then I went to Kuwait in 2012. I remember those later trips a lot of people like, well, this is my third deployment or whatever. And they were like 28 or 30. And I was like, why are you back? And it's like, I just did it for the money or I'm just here to support my guys. I don't want my guys to go through this, you know? And some of them still believed in the mission, but many were like, ah, whatever. I'm just here for the $20,000 reenlistment bonus or to make sure my guys are okay. I mean, literally that that's what it came down to. Um, so let's get into what Danny has to say. I'm one of the lucky ones leaving the madness of army life with a modest pension and all of my limbs intact feels like a genuine escape. Both the army and I knew it was a time, it was time for me to go. I'm tired of carrying water for empire and they grown weary of dealing with my, <laughs> with my, and footing the bill for my, uh, <laughs> with my dissenting articles. You can't really see that because the, but but he was writing these dissenting articles in truth dig while he was still in service and footing, and footing the bill for my seemingly never-ending PTSD treatments. Now I'm society's problem, unleashed into a civilian world I've never gazed upon with adult eyes. He joined when he was 18. Went from high school to West Point. He's never been in civilian life his entire adult life. Half of his life, we've been at war. The global war on terror. He refers to it as GWOT. Think of that. You're 35, so you're an older millennial. That's the older side of the millennials. We've been at war for half your life. And the each, each year younger millennial that you are, increases the percentage of your life that the United States has been in the global war on terror. There are privates enlisting today that were not, that were born after 9-11. 
Those military deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan in particular turned a budding neocon into an unbashed progressive. My experiences there transformed an insecure, aspiring dealer in violence into someone who might be as, <laughs> as near a former military man can get to a pacifist. And what the U.S. Army helped me become is someone who, in the end, I don't mind gazing at in the mirror each morning. So here's my official goodbye to all that. To a military and a nation engaged in an Orwellian set of forever wars and to all the professional foot soldiers who made so much of it all possible. While the remainder of the country worked, tweeted, shopped, and slept in every sense of the word. That's part of what he's trying to do. Is because the rest of America, and I, I, I remember this in 2004. And 2006, the first two times I went to it, I remember coming back from 2004 and people go, we got people in Afghanistan? Because starting in 03, all in the media was talking about was Iraq, Iraq. I'd say, yeah, we still got people in Afghanistan. There's 30, 40,000 troops there. I remember I would tell people, like, where were we? I was like, oh, I just got back from Afghanistan. Oh my God, how was it? I go, Afghanistan was crazy, man. I, I give this, this, and this story. And they go, wow, well, thank you. It was so great you went over to Iraq. And I was like, no, two different countries. But the war machine does such a great job. Caitlin Johnstone uh, posted this on her Twitter. She said, it's not who controls the money or the wars. She goes, real power is controlling the narrative. And that's what they've done. That's why this statement slept in every sense of the word. And, and, and you can shame the American public a little bit to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Part of it is though, the American public has been lied to for so long, we don't even know. And I mean, this article, I'm not going to go into all of it, but he's like, oh, all of the thank you for your service, those empty, what does that mean? That empty gesture, thank you for your service. I don't even know what that means. So if you haven't read him before on Truth Dig, this is a different publication, but if you haven't read Danny Surgeon on Truth Dig, please do. This very eye-opening account from when it, most of his columns until this is the first one. So everything prior to this one, he was while he was still in the army. Goodbye to the majors who wanted to be colonels and the colonels who wanted to be generals at any cost. To the sociopaths who rose in the ranks by trampling on the souls of their overburdened troopers, trading lives for minor bumps in statistics and pats on the shoulder from aggressive superiors. Farewell to the generals I served under who then shamelessly spun through Washington's revolving door, trading their multi-starred uniforms for six and seven figure corporate gigs on the boards of weapons manufacturers, AKA the merchants of death, as they were once known in a distant time. And so help feed the unquenchable appetite of the military industrial beast. We've spent somewhere between five to nine trillion dollars on the global war, war on terror. Trump claims we got ISIS, we defeated ISIS. Oh, okay, but didn't we help create them? We defeated the thing we helped create? Like the Taliban, which was the Mujahideen that we helped arm when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan and the Soviets were in Afghanistan for nine years. And we we're like, oh, the Soviets were so stupid getting in that Afghanistan quagmire. We've been there for 17 going on 18 years. October will be 18 years. It's already America's longest war. I put this quote at the end of my movie, La Afghanistan, which is, shows me, what, if you want to see what being in a war zone is like through the eyes of a comedian, watch that film. It's available at GrahamElwood.com. The soldier above all others prays for peace. For it is the soldier who must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. That's General Douglas MacArthur. So thank you, Dominic, for supporting me on the Patreon and sending me this column. And thank you, most importantly, Danny Surgeon, for 
speaking up. Because look what's happening. Chelsea Manning is back in jail for being a whistleblower. He hasn't really been a whistleblower, but he's been calling them out from what he's seen in real time. And this sentiment from General MacArthur is why it, it sickens me when I hear the, the chicken hawks in Congress <laughs> and the Senate, war, 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 and the White House, we want war, war, war. People like Trump and the Clintons and the Bushes and the Obamas and all the war, war, war people. Because you know, let me tell you something, Chelsea Clinton and Ivanka Trump are not going to war. The Bush girls and the Obama girls, they're not going to go. They're not going to go to war. They're not going to have to go through this. Jeff Bezos kids aren't going to go. So the rich and the powerful don't typically, their kids don't have to typically go to war. Joe Biden's did. He lost his son over there, if I'm not mistaken. This is what happens when, as Eisenhower warned us, the military industrial complex runs everything. They run the narrative. We have no media to call this out. They saw what the media did in the seventies with Vietnam. Like, what are we doing there? Why are we doing there? The Washington post published all those articles and documents and everything. So they said that that'll never happen again. We're going to control the narrative. So hats off to Danny Surgeon for stepping up and writing this and letting us all know what it's like. I urge you to read the whole article and follow more of his work on truthdig.com. Thank you for supporting the show, everybody. Progressive Comedy Tour is coming to Texas this weekend, April 12th through the 15th, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, Austin. Get your tickets at grandmelwood.com. And next week, Political Vigilante Live in Hollywood, Go to GrahamElwood.com April 18th for those tickets as well. Thank you for watching.